I went from zero to absolute D2 god in just a few days on ladder. I was not given any items, nor did I use any resources accumulated from other ladder seasons. The real way that I did this might be surprising to some, but it's something that anybody can do. It's a pretty common way that me and the crew get decked out early, and I'm going to reveal all those secrets to you. Let's start from the beginning. Much like we do each ladder season, a few of us got together in Discord and played through the game from scratch. I decided to go with a lightning sorceress. Since we played through on Classic, a sorceress can actually static hell monsters down to 1% health, a unique and extremely useful group mechanic in Classic. You might be thinking, cool, that's not very original to play through on a sorceress. Well, my friends, originality is overrated. For example, I bet you thought that intro track was My Name Is by Eminem. Well, I'm about to blow your mind. The real track sampled by Dr. Dre was the 1975 hit I Got The by Labby Seafrey. The point is, fuck originality. It's all been done before. I simply knew that a sorceress would be our gateway to adventure, our G2A, if you will. Speaking of which, this video is brought to you by G2A. G2A is a hub of digital entertainment where you can get software, gift cards, and game keys with instant delivery. And as if things weren't heavily discounted enough on this site, this month, G2A has even better deals going on to celebrate its 14th birthday. They're giving away top gaming laptops and one year of games for free. If you want in, be sure to check it out with my special link below. Many approved sellers buy game keys in bulk directly from the studios and are able to pass those savings on to you. If you've been wanting to try out some of the newest gaming titles at massive discounts, well, now might be the time. G2A is indeed our gateway to adventure. Check it out and let me know what you find. After easying the game and getting through hell difficulty, we converted to expansion and went our separate ways. The goal on day one is to find something, anything that's rare and useful and sell it. This will serve as a key strategy to decking out our character in a few days. I started out running Countess to gather runes and bases to help make some items to get me going. But sometimes you can get really lucky during the gear up phase. I found a low rune very early on from a Countess run and was able to sell it for quite a bit. This was my biggest find and top sale by far, mainly because of the timing, but I was also able to find some other GGs early on, like these near-perfect T-strokes which sold for 500 foreign gold. These are actually a big ticket item for Zon players early on since the introduction of Sunder Charms. I also found some Wartrav boots which sold for 200 as time marched on. I also got pretty lucky with some other finds. This was practically what I was doing for the first couple of days of ladder. On day three, instead of immediately selling everything at this point, I would keep items that made my character stronger or helped me find other godly gear. After taking a short break from the game for a while, I had realized that Pitts was actually terrorized with about 10 minutes left on the zone, so I decided to farm it and look for my lightning sunder charm. But the first thing I found was way better. Pay attention to this random hit from the Merc that I didn't even notice as it happened. It's a really good thing I'm in the habit of holding Alt as I teleport through dungeons or else I would have missed this. In this same set of runs, I did find my first Sunder, which was a good one, but unfortunately it wasn't lightning. But the next drop was certainly in line with the type of end game gear that I was looking for. Hi, my name is my name is, my name is, his name is To be quite honest, this was probably the best 10 minutes of MF I've ever seen in my entire Diablo 2 existence. Then, before the zone ended, I did indeed find the Lightning Sunder I was searching for. Soon after this, I found some other things that I traded because I didn't necessarily need them on my build, and again, the goal is just to deck this character out as soon as possible. For the next few days, I just enjoyed the game, playing a few hours each day and seeing what I could find. You might be thinking that this is not a good strategy to get decked out early, but I disagree. The hard work was already done. My plan was to let the juck fuckery we observed in Season 4 play out as it does in Season 5, and just see how long it takes for the economy to absolutely collapse. 
this season, that took about four days. By day four of season five, the D2R economy was on its last leg of defiance. By that, I mean items were still worth way more than they would be in the later season, but prices had tanked considerably. That same low rune that I sold for 1500 forum gold was now going for 150, a 90% decrease in value. It's time to let go of the profits that we had secured early on and see what it would take to get best in slot gear for the entire build. These are the deals I found along with the days on which I found them. While we might have only found a low rune, tea strokes, and other small trinkets early on, we were able to basically turn those items into all of these. And while this concept might be new to some people, old school players of LOD probably aren't surprised by this. This used to happen on the old version of the game as well, but not quite on this scale. The decrease in item value seems to be even more rampant. But why? Bots. The botting community is out of control, and Blizzard doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. There's even a Discord server called GID committed to running this botting community. There's even people with no shame streaming their bot activity in this place. It's crazy. It's sort of ironic how bad the situation is getting. The purpose of some people botting is to make a profit, but the more they do it, the easier it is for us to not spend a dime. But regardless of all that, I had a ton of fun on this build. The build is great if your goal is to terrorize the terror zones and morph into a Nova Sword later on, but I gotta say I hate how bad this thing is with Uber Tristram. I was finally able to get my torch with the help of a friend, but the fact that I couldn't annihilate the endgame with a decked out version of this build just makes me want to go back to the fireballer. But damn. That self-wielded infinity feels real good otherwise. Did you play Season 5 of D2R? What were your thoughts? Let me know down below, and I'll catch you in the next video.